The original COM marker Omni XUV laser comes with a standard 5 watt laser module, and honestly, it's pretty impressive. It can mark almost anything, even engrave superb reliefs into wood or put 3D objects into crystal blocks. But things are about to get a whole lot more interesting because Commarker just announced a 10 watt upgrade kit for this Omni X. And in this hands on video, I'm going to walk you through the entire process for upgrading this from disassembly, installation, lens calibration. And at the end, I'll even compare some side by side engravings between the 5 watt and the 10 watt so you can see how much difference that extra power really makes. So let's get into it. Now, before I start ripping my laser to pieces, I wanted to have a good performance baseline with the existing 5 watt laser module. I'm going to use some of my go to UV materials for this so, coated metal business cards, stainless steel, slate, wood, and finally uh, a cr clear crystal block for, for an internal engraving sample. I'm going to run the same projects with the same settings for each laser module, though I'm going to warn you in advance that I'll likely have to do some adjustment to the 10 watt settings in some cases, but I'll talk about these if and when they arise. Let's kick this off with a coated metal business card, and even at 5 watts the detail here is excellent, the text is really crisp, and you can see the clear contrast between the filled in the filled areas. I'm going to run a photo on the 304 stainless steel. The image has very fine detail, but you can see the the around the edges, the photo is just not engraved very well, and that's just due to the settings I chose. On the slate coaster, I'm going to put a sketch image, and as expected, the 5 watt laser doesn't give the whitest of white engraving here. But make no mistake, the result is fantastic here. Uh, it's just that the image has a slight blue tone rather than a white tone. Now for the 3D relief, I redid the Mandela image that I showed in my Omni X review. And you can see these things just look so amazing because without the presence of heat, the engraving here looks more like a carving. Now the last sample is one I showed in the previous Omni X 5 watt review. And I'll just use that one to save some time and material costs. <laughs> Note that the original glass engraving failed near the end because I was having some issues with some, some of the early beta software for this. Uh, it left the ship incomplete, but it'll be good enough for this example, and I'll still run the same settings when I create the new one. So that's our set of baseline tests, and they all produced great results overall on the 5 watt. You know, it'll be a great comparison with the 10 watt. So now it's time to shut everything down and start the teardown. So upgrading the Omni X is relatively simple. It basically involves removing the original laser module on the tower and replacing it with what looks like an almost identical box. If you assembled your original 5 watt Omni X when it arrived, then you should be able to do this upgrade with relative ease. The whole process took me, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes, but I was recording at the time, so it could be less than that. So. You start by removing the green shield off the front, the door, and then unscrew all of the uh, the plugs at the back and then remove the, the rest of the shell, the cover, and there's four screws on the back and four on, on the side. And of course, you've got to remember to turn the laser around and remove the ones on the other side as well. So uh, that's probably the hardest process. After that, you can just lift the, the shell off the, the laser and uh, then remove the plugs off the back of the laser and uh, unscrew the laser. And that's pretty much the entire process. That part is really quick. And then at this point, you're ready to put the new laser module on and reassemble everything. And that process is essentially the reverse. So you'll basically start by putting the new laser module on and screwing the four screws underneath. And then you're going to put the plugs back in. Now there's one additional plug here, the sensor plug that uh, you may or may not already have a cable for. I didn't, so I had to actually do a bit more work, but I think all the production lasers have this. Uh, then put the cover back on and again, put all those screws back in. It takes a bit of time, but it's again, relatively simple to do. And finally put all the plugs back into the back of the laser. And at this point, you're pretty much ready to go and, and start trying this out. All right, so the laser's been upgraded, it powers up just fine, and now I need to calibrate the lens. Now, fortunately, Calmarker has one of the best lens calibration uh, mechanisms for a Galvo laser. So I went into Calmarker Studio and I just drew a 50 by 50 millimeter square here. I'm going to use that in a second. But 
I'm going to go and, and frame it on the laser. And you can see that the sides without any calibration are kind of bulged. It's also, if you measure it, uh, instead of being 50 millimeters, it's actually like 55 or something. So I need to fix all of this. And uh, again, this is pretty simple and I'll show you how to, how to do this. So the way you're going to do it is you're going to go into the, the, uh, administration tool. Now, if you're logging in for the first time, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, but after that, then you can do everything I'm doing here. So I'll select this field lens calibration and uh, there's a marking pattern here that I can create and I'll just run it here. And you can see the sides are very bulged and we can fix this. So the way we're gonna fix it is we're gonna measure the three horizontal lines. Those will be the X's and the three vertical lines and they'll be the Y's. And then I'll just quickly enter them in here just to show you uh, what to do. So uh, again, there, the middle one there on the horizontal was quite a bit uh, longer than the top and bottom because it was bulged out. But the values are the values. And, and as long as you can measure something, you, you can do this. Once you're happy, you can say generate the, the recommended values here. And when I click that, you'll see all those fields on the right change to the appropriate values. So that's all I have to do. Now I can just confirm this and then you'll see it's put back into the main line uh, in, in studio. And uh, if I rerun the, the pattern test again, you'll see that it, the sides are very square. And if you measured this, you'd find out that it was also 50 millimeter or 70 millimeters rather, because that's the size of the workspace I'm working with. So overall, really simple. You can do this with both lenses if you've got two lenses. And at this point, you're, we're ready to go. We're going to run some samples, uh, the same samples I ran on the 5 watt. All right, so now it's time to compare results between the original 5 watt laser that I had and the now upgraded 12 watt com marker Omni X. And I'm not going to show you all of the engraving jobs again, but I'm going to run the same jobs with the same settings, and I'll show you a bit of it while I'm uh, while I'm talking over it here. But when I get to the results, I'll start with the business card, and you'll see there isn't really a whole lot of, of difference here. Now, what that really means is that there's a ton of opportunity here to to go a lot faster, so reduce the the dwell time. And, uh, and you save a bunch of time. And that's really what the 12 watt laser is gonna give you. Now, the next thing to look at is the, is the stainless steel on the, on the dog where I engraved the, the actual photo. And on the five watt, I had a bit of trouble getting it right with these settings. Now don't get too hung up on the settings. We could actually make it perfect, but uh, I really just wanted to run the same settings on both lasers. And it was very contrasty on the 5 watt. Now, when I ran it on the 12 watt upgrade, uh, it doesn't seem quite as dark as it was on the 5 watt, but it's much softer contrast. So it's, there's a lot more detail visible and you don't see the, the very edges missing like you did on the 5 watt. This gave me an opportunity to, to try out this theory about going faster. So the, the, the first image here on the 12 watt took the same as a 5 watt. It took 221 seconds. And then I just simply reduce the dwell time to uh, to 30 microseconds from 100. And that reduced the engrave time from that 220 seconds down to about 180. And again, you could tune all of these and realistically, you could get this engraved down to probably a minute or less. But uh, again, the, the point here was to try the exact same settings. So now moving on to the slate, and this is where you're going to start to see some substantial difference. Again, same settings. The one on the right is, of course, the 12 watt, and you can see it's much whiter, much brighter than, than the 5 watt. The 5 watt one looks great, but it's you see an opportunity here to, to do better jobs and do them faster. Then I moved on to the Mandala, and the one on the left is the 5 watt, and it looks fantastic too, but when you see the one on the right with the 12 watt, it's so much deeper. It's probably two millimeters deep into the wood and I could easily have gone deeper. And then finally finishing off with the crystal and the original Starship Enterprise that I did and then the new one. And you can see the new one is again, whiter, brighter. You need a lot less artificial light to light it up to see that it, it, it's definitely a, a more substantial engraving. All right, before we leave 3D glass engraving, I wanted to show you one more thing here, which is really kind of interesting because I didn't know you could actually do this, and that's to put texture on things you put inside the glass. So that's pretty simple, actually. You can just 
uh, go to the 3D uh, engraving, internal engraving, import a file. Now you can import .obj files, which are really STL files that have texture on them. And when I load one of these in, you can see we have our little, our little mini Harry Potter. So I'm going to scale them up a lot, actually, to, to around 33 times. And you'll see them inside the, the shape of my crystal here. Then I'll rotate them to have the minimum number of layers, which is face down in this case. Now, as far as settings, uh, you can see them here, 0.05 for the X and, and Z spacing. I'm going to set the dwell time to 100. The frequency is fine at 40. And then I'll increase the pulse width to 18. Then I can just frame. And when I go over to the, the laser, you'll see that I can just put a card down or use that green paddle that comes with the laser and just get the, the shape centered in, in the top of the crystal. And I'll show you here, this is about, I don't know, 80 times the speed. It took about 15 minutes to do this. And you can see it engraving here. Uh, these engravings in crystal are just so cool. And when, you, when you're when you done, you can see that things like his eyes and his eyebrows are darker than they would be. Now, if he didn't have this texture, those would all be the same shade. And one more quick look at it here. And uh, again, if you want to do 3D crystals, then the Omni X might be the thing to do. Now, if you do need uh, OBJ files, you can get them in places like Free 3D, and in this case, I'll just grab this eyeball. Maybe you want an eyeball in a piece of glass, and you can just grab it and download it and use that, uh, at least for your own purposes, depending on the license. So there's lots of models out there, and you get effectively what amounts to grayscale inside Crystal. All right, so let's summarize this here. Uh, the upgrade here is very easy to do. It takes, I don't know, 15 minutes tops and then you're ready to go. You get a lot more power. Now keep in mind, most competitors to this laser, uh, they all only have five watts as well. So here you're getting you know, 10, 12 watts of, of extra power and that makes a huge difference. You definitely get really, uh, a really big improvement on 3D engraving. So though you saw those reliefs and, and certainly in the crystals and the addition of the shading in crystals is also very cool. Now there's really only one downside here. And if you're in business, this may not be a big issue, but if, if you're just a hobbyist, this is maybe not the upgrade for you because this, this upgrade is fairly expensive. I'll pop up the, the, the page here. And if you're just a hobbyist, then effectively what you're doing by up doing this upgrade is you're buying essentially a, a, another laser. And, uh, you know, that might be cost prohibitive for a lot of people. But if you're in business, this extra power is going to make a huge difference. You're going to save a lot more time on projects and time is money. So in, in a business, this is going to pay for itself relatively quickly. Now, there is a, a a Black Friday special. If you're watching this video uh, in the next few days after I release it, uh, you're going to be able to save $1,500 off the current price, which is a, a pretty substantial uh, savings. And uh, you can jump on that. I'll put an affiliate link in the description down below. You'll help out the channel if you use it and you will save that extra money. So I'll leave it there. And it, certainly if you have questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, maybe you want to see some different materials and uh, I'll do my best to get those done. And, and with that, I'll wind down and I'll say, get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.